Hello, I'm Kydek, and welcome to my introductory guide to creating your own custom face rig avatar. Over the next few videos, you're going to see everything that I did in order to create this avatar that you see now. So without further ado, let's get started. So I thought we'd start out here with the drawing phase of kind of making the face rig. And uh, I got here an example of what was my first face rig. And this is the one of Shard. And ultimately what you're going to actually going to show all these layers real quick. And this is kind of the end result of what you're trying to shoot for in your drawing. And so like this is the basic drawing of Shard and anything that's going to be moving independently of the others is what you're going to need to create a new layer for. The other thing is for some things, some things sit on top of each other. Anything like that also needs to be on its own layer. You can have as many layers as you want. And the only thing you really need to pay attention to is the fact that all of the individual images need to be split up and they are going to be mapped to a single texture format in the end and depending on the version of the uh, rigging software live 2d that you have you need to or you're gonna have different amounts of uh, texture space to be able to play with right now i'm still using kind of the free trial which is the full version and the full version is normally thirty dollars a month and i'll probably be spending that but uh, and i think in the free version you're stuck to a 1000 by 1000 canvas for that final texture size. So the only thing you really need to pay attention to is just note that having too many layers getting squeezed into that final size may result in some image quality loss. So ultimately the way I've got this is I've got this back tuft, uh, but that's actually behind him and it's just a chunk of hair um, that when I turn my head uh, is gonna stick off to the sides just to kind of indicate that his head's turning just because the actual muzzle itself doesn't really rotate in this model. Uh, that kind of rotation is a slightly more advanced feature and I haven't really gotten around to uh, messing with it too much, but here's, uh, you can see a little bit of it right there. Um, and so you're gonna have the body as a base and that's gonna be one solid object mainly because you're not gonna have arms moving, you're not gonna have anything crazy like that. Ultimately, there's going to be a simple deform in the body. Um, and that's just going to kind of follow the head as it moves left and right. Uh, then I've got my own like chest floof piece that is its own layer just to kind of give a little bit more of that 3D effect as the body turns or the head turns and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to distort the middle of that chest floof just to kind of indicate a little bit of a 3D rotation effect. Um, the other thing is also note that you have to bake all the shading into the layers themselves. Um, there is a more advanced feature you can do in Live 2D to actually make some of these layers multiply layers, and that will let you do shadows independent of the rest of the body. Uh, but I haven't really messed with it too much. It's a slightly more advanced feature, and I'm still kind of new. So each of the ears are independent layers, and actually one thing I'm going to show you is when you're creating these layers, just because it's hidden behind something, you still want to fully draw it a little bit. Um, so like, for instance, in these ears, I've got them rounded out and the shading all the way down there, just so that as the ears rotate a little bit, little bits may be sticking out from the head base. Like I'll show you an example real quick. Um, like for instance, when this ear rotates, well, obviously it's not gonna be pivoting there, but if the ear rotates, more and more of the actual underlying piece is going to be uh, revealed. There, that's a little more realistic, but but see, even here, if the ear goes all the way out, that little piece starts to look weird just because I haven't modeled the ear all the way down. Um, so that's going to be some of the limits to your animation. Um, another thing I kind of messed up now, well, something that you're kind of stuck with is, for instance, uh, the hair. Here, I'm going to undo this real quick. Cancel out of that. Okay. One interesting thing is this hair piece. Where are we at? There's the hair. All right, this hair layer 
it has to sit in front of the face. Um, but it also, the hair would go down behind the head and behind this other ear. And you can't quite do that at the same time. Now, one thing you could do is split the hair into two separate layers. One chunk that's in front and one chunk that's behind the head and the ear. But that's something that you can play with if you're interested. In this instant, I, instance, I just used a uh, single layer to uh, show the hair that is sitting in front of the face. But that does also mean that if I do rotate this ear, uh, it's going to be a little more obvious. So I'll have to distort the hair just a little bit to kind of match that. Um... But as we go through, we got a base head layer. Now, one thing that I'm actually going to try Nick this time is I have this solid head piece um, with a hole for the mouth. And you're going to see one issue that I actually ran into that I've been doing in the past two face rigs that I might not have to deal with is if I actually cut a hole in there uh, for the actual inside of the mouth. Because uh, one thing I got, so I have this layer, the inside of the mouth. And that's going to get covered up by the teeth are there. But we're really looking for the lower jaw. So I have this separate layer, which is actually just this line and a tiny bit of the outline just to sit and cover up that inside of the mouth. But I'm wondering if I cut a hole in the middle of that uh, head base and put the inside of the mouth behind that, I might not have to animate both the lower jaw and the head base at the same time. So it's something I'm going to try out with this, uh, with the example that I'm about to do. So as we move forward, uh, I am animating both the upper and lower teeth separately. Or I'm going to animate the teeth separately to the rest of the face, just because as the mouth is closing, I want to hide the teeth a little bit more. And when it opens up, the teeth are going to be shown a little more. Um, ultimately, you can set it up to where maybe you put it into the head base or maybe you bake it into the inside of the mouth or something like that. Um, use as many layers as you want. But if you want something to animate separately of everything else, you need to put it in its own layer. Uh, so here we go, we have the lower jaw, and that's whole purpose is to cover up the lower end of the teeth, just to kind of round it out. And then we've got the eye whites, and actually I'll get into the eyes in just a minute, because uh, they're probably the most complex part of the whole rig. And then we've got this other layer, the upper muzzle, and that's what's going to cover up the, the topper half, half of the inside of the mouth. And then I do have the nose on a separate layer. I was thinking I was going to push for a little more of a 3D effect when I first made this. Ultimately, I found that having the nose on its own layer is relatively excessive. Um, and I actually didn't end up doing a separate nose on my, my second uh, face rig. All right, so now we're going to get into, let's get rid of these eyelids real quick. I'm going to turn on these eye whites. And don't want the red. Nope. I wait. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in here and show you a little bit of what's going on here. So ultimately, within the animation software, uh, the eyelids and the eyeballs are going to be clipped. In other words, they're only going to show what's inside of this eye white area. Um, that's going to make it so that you can look up and it's going to hide chunks of the eyes when you blink your eyelids, um, aren't like sticking up above your head. Cause obviously I'll show you how it was is when I had the eyelid there, it's covering up like the hair and everything else. But ultimately all that gray area is going to be clipped because it's only going to display what's inside the white part of the eye. And that's going to be an easy feature that you, uh, implement inside the, uh, uh, live 2D software. So as we go, so now we have um, these two, uh, uh, the rims. So I have these as separate layers because be with the eyelids and eyeballs being clipped inside that white area, you still need these uh, eye rims to be their separate layer and it is just that line right there 
but you need them to be their own separate layer because they have to sit on top of everything also. Otherwise, you can see kind of here how the eyeball is still covering up that uh, line a bit. Um, and so that, that line itself needs to be its own separate layer to kind of go on top of everything to kind of frame everything a little bit better. And so now we're going to turn on these eyelids and everything again. We've got the lower and upper eyelids, so those are all going to be their own layers. Now, one thing that I did learn in this first one that I'm going to, that I fixed on my second one, is when drawing this eyelid, um, I found it better to actually draw the line where it's about halfway closed, just because when this eyelid is fully closed, you're going to be animating it and distorting that image. Uh, to go all the way into that fully closed position. But when it's in that position, the distortion is much stronger. And it ends up at a fully blinked state. Um, the line itself and a little bit of the texturing and everything ends up looking pretty bad, actually. Uh, so uh, if you if you draw this eyelid in its own like halfway state, it's going to be a little distorted at the top and a little bit distorted at the bottom. But for the most part, when it's open, it's hidden uh, because it's behind that eye rim area and uh, you're not going to see anything. And when it's closed, it's going to be slightly less distorted. So uh, that helps out a good bit. So I think that's a quick walkthrough of kind of the layers and everything that we're shooting for when it comes to creating a face rig. And one thing I'll show you now is when I did this part, it started off with just a sketch of the main body and what I was shooting for, I think that's the hair. Yeah. So we got that. So ultimately, this is made up of two layers. On this initial layer, this is everything that's symmetrical. So when I drew it, I drew it symmetrically. Um, and it worked out pretty good. And then the hair I did as its own layer because it's an asymmetrical part of the drawing. When, uh, So when it actually came time to actually draw each of these layers, I typically would... I'll do a quick example. I'll just do like this ear real quick. Um, this is going to be quick and sketchy, but um, ultimately what I did is if I was trying to do this this ear, I would create two layers real quick. I would use uh, the line tool and I would outline my ear real quick, making sure to bring it in so that you have a little bit of extra space so as the ear pulls out, it's still... Uh, showing and you're not seeing any harsh edges or weird anomalies for the most part unless you move it a ton and then on the bottom layer i would do my fill or whatever um ultimately you're just trying to create these drawings there's lots of different styles and methods and then ultimately in the end you would just merge the layers and then they would be their own separate piece and that's kind of how i broke up the entire drawing Doing the upper muzzle, I do the line work and then the fills, merge them together, say call it the upper muzzle with the hair, line work, fills, merge it all. And ultimately you're creating each layer to be its own separate thing. And uh, yeah. So with that kind of described, this is going to be the project that I'm working on today. Now for the most part, this is gonna be time-lapsed. Uh, but I thought I'd introduce it a little bit. So here's a sketch that I did on a piece of paper. I brought it in. I'm working on a canvas of 1300 by 1300. Uh, you can make it a little bit more narrow if you don't want the head to sway side to side. But because I've got these giant ears uh, on Kydec here, uh, as he tilts his head, the ears are going to need more space to the sides. Um, so I went to a 1300 by 1300 canvas. Uh, one other thing to note is don't make a huge canvas just because uh, remember you do need to fit everything within that texture size. And so if you made it huge, it's still going to get shrunk down anyway at a certain point. And it's best to draw in as close to what it's finally going to be as possible. 
And at this 1300 by 1300 canvas, it's slightly larger than the final texture size. Um, and uh, another, th or, and because it's slightly larger, I'm still going to be able to do things like with these ears, they're going to be broken off and be given their own separate spot on the final texture. You know, things like the upper muzzle, it's going to be broken off and given its own spot. So every layer that you would have had is going to have its own final spot on the final texture image. Um, so just kind of be aware of that. Um, and in this drawing, I think I'm going to be a little bit more experimental. Um, I'm not going to push for that line work and fills style. I'm actually going to try and be a little bit more painterly with it. Um, I have no idea if it's going to work out, but I thought it'd be fun to play around. I'm doing another face rig anyway, so it's fun to experiment. Um, and I'll let you know how well it works out. Obviously, you're going to see. <laughs> um, so with this part, I think I'm just going to go into a time lapse real quick and uh, build all the layers and create this image. So anyway, I think I'm going to go into time lapse and I'm going to draw this thing up. And uh, I'll have a few more points to give you uh, after I finish that up. Uh, stick around. And that's it for the part one of this guide. I hope it was relatively helpful. I'm still kind of new to working with this and editing and such. Um, I know my speech is kind of silly, but anyway, stay tuned for part two where I'm going to do a bit of a speed paint drawing this avatar, along with some final exporting and getting preparation for rigging notes at the end. For the most part it's going to be a speed paint, so if you want to skip to the end of that video, totally understand.